everybody, it's me Margaret. I am back from ex some extensive traveling, among other things that have kept me away from YouTube, but I have some things to talk about today. Some things we have covered before. For instance, this yarn. Short color change yarn. This yarn was given to me by one of you and I love it, but I find it incredibly challenging. All short change, short color change yarn. Let me give you an up close look at it. So first, can we just appreciate how really short these color changes are? They're about one and a half to three inches at the longest. Now because they're incredibly short lengths of color, I don't know how they were designed with crochet in mind at all. And let me show you what I mean. One single crochet stitch uses much more yarn than one knit stitch. And here are a few other crochet attempts with different stitches to see if I could find anything that I liked. I even tried holding two strands together to see if I could just embrace the busyness and no, didn't like that at all. At least this camel stitch gave us the defined shape of a V as opposed to the typical twisty side view that we usually see in a crochet stitch, but it's still way too busy for my tastes. So here I was with this wonderful, happy, primary colored yarn that was given to me by one of my viewers years ago, and I was dead set on making this into a wonderful, happy, primary colored hat. Somehow. Now I remember giving it a go with a plain knit stitch a while back, so after a search uh, I see that I do still have it and I remember why. It's just so busy that it makes me nervous just to look at it. In the past I've handled this by holding a solid strand along with it. It didn't work at all in this instance. So I'm editing this video right now and I realized what a horrible job I did with that clip. You can't really tell what's going on here. I was holding a single yellow strand against the multicolored like that. So I'll zoom in so you can see it. But a lot of times when you put a solid together like that, you're adding more of one color. And so sometimes it, it does help the situation, but clearly in, in this case it doesn't. Now here's how I've handled busy yarns in the past, and that is I put them with a solid color yarn and kind of intersperse them with a solid stitch. And that, that works pretty well. Now this one is crochet, and I do have a tutorial for this hat. I'll link that below, but it works pretty well, I think. And then you have this. Now this is a slip stitch knit hat. I was gonna do a tutorial for this, but I never got around to doing it. So you certainly don't wanna wait on me because who knows when I will. So look up slip stitch knitting and um, you'll see how to do this. It's very easy. It's not a difficult color work. You're basically using one color all the way on each row, slipping the, the, the one you had done previously. So it's pretty easy and it comes out great. But there you go, you've got a solid mixed with the busy and it just breaks it all up. So thinking along those lines, I wanted to do something different and let me show you what I came up with. Here's the before, this is your typical knit stitch hat. I probably could have improved upon this if I had just made the band a solid color, but you know, I didn't. So regardless, you see what's happening here with just the knit stitches. Okay, now watch this. Dun da da. Look how much better that looks. See the difference? So what is this? I did a black band and then I alternated black and white stitches. So you can see it there up close. And I think it made all the difference in the world. It's kind of like when you were little and you would outline your coloring pages. You know how you, you go around each one with a black marker? I'm sure, I mean a black color. I'm sure you did that before. And it just made all the difference in the world. Same yarn, but it looks like two different types of yarn, doesn't it? Just out of curiosity, let's see if we can fake a black band on this hat just to see what it would look like. 
Does it, does it help any? No, not really. <laughs> now, one of my major rules that I tell people when crafting for charity is you've got to vary from what you like. Not everybody in the world has your tastes. So I'm sure there are people out there, maybe even some of you, who enjoy this happy busy hat because it, there's a lot going on here. There's nothing wrong with that. And so this, is, this hat is well done. It doesn't have any mistakes in it or anything. I wouldn't be embarrassed to give it away is what I'm trying to say. So it can go to charity. Would I wear this hat? No, I wouldn't. It's not my style, but it doesn't mean that it's not someone else's style. Okay, so I ask you, could the moral of this story be that yarn itself is kind of like clothes? For example, the way you style it, you could get a completely different look, kind of like this. So let's watch Lydia. She's gonna show us this concept with clothes. There's nothing wrong with a white t-shirt and black shorts, but watch what it can become if you style it differently. Just by changing what you wear with these two pieces, you get completely different looks. And essentially, isn't that what we do with yarn? And isn't that true of all yarn? What it looks like in the skein and what it looks like when it's made up are going to be two completely different things. And that doesn't matter whether we're talking about expensive yarn or inexpensive yarns or how it have you. So much to consider, like when making socks, for example, the striping is gonna come out completely different than if you were to make a hat from this self-striping yarn. So, um, that's just how it is. So think about different ways that you can style your yarn to get a different look. And speaking of clothes, I want to talk about my crooked belt. <laughs> Obviously, you're not supposed to wear your belt crooked, although you could and call it a purposeful statement. But I, you know, I told you I've been going through my wardrobe, at least I did several videos back. And I've weeded out things that just don't work for me anymore and really kind of paring things down. And as I went through my belt uh, collection, which is not that extensive, but I realized I needed new belts. They were breaking in places and there were some where I had tried to add holes improperly so they looked kind of funny. And uh, it's just a long story. So I know that I needed three, I needed to replace these basic colors of belt. And I started picking them out one at a time with different looks until I found this set that it all had these gold things. Now, the collections did come in different colors, like it had silver on this or you know, different types of patterning on the metal. And I didn't want that. I just wanted plain belts. And I saw a collection of three at a really good price. And so I was like, well, oh, it's worth trying. Let me look at it. Well, not only did they come, and I am very pleased with the quality of these, but they came in a really nice gift box type of situation. So I'm thinking in my head, if you have somebody that you need to give a gift to coming up, this, this is nice. They also had these little bags in it where you could roll up and store your belts um, nicely. And there's another bonus that I didn't even know was included, but a proper hole puncher. So you put this little thing down, like if you were to need an additional hole, I don't, but if you were, and you could use this on other belts as well, you put this down and whack it with a hammer and then you've got a perfectly round hole for your belt. So that's great. I got these from Amazon and I'm gonna link them below in case anybody is interested. Now excuse the fact that this head is too small for this hat, but I just want you to see as I twist it around that you see no seams, right? It just looks nice and smooth all the way around no matter where you stop. And that is because I used a technique called helix knitting. Now I have to tell funny on myself about the helix knitting. One of you had mentioned it. I said, Margaret, have you ever tried it? No, I hadn't tried it. And oh my goodness, it sounded wonderful not to have a seam. And so I thanked her, then I went and looked it up. And I had cookies all over my computer about helix knitting. I had already done helix knitting. <laughs> completely forgot it. And that's one of the things I like about getting old is, uh, or at least it's my joke, is that everything's new again. <laughs> Truth be told, I've always been like that. I can't blame it on old age. <laughs> Just 
dingy. Very Pink Knits does a wonderful tutorial on helix knitting, but it's not a complicated process. Let me give you the overview really quickly. You know how if you were to knit a hat in one single color, you never have a seam because you just keep going around and around and around as you knit, right? It just is, is a spiral, okay? Well, with helix knitting, basically what we do is we put all the colors on the same row to begin with. Now, what does that mean? Here I did the ribbing, okay? I kept black going when I began to start the hat. I kept black on my needles. And I just did a straight row of knitting one third of the way around because I have three colors. And then when I got to this point, I let the black drop and I added in the multicolor. And I knitted a third of the way around and I let that drop and I added in the white. And this is all on the same row like that. Now basically what you do from here is you just knit until you run into the next color. <laughs> and you just you just pick it up. It's um it's pretty simple. Look at that link down below and uh for very pink knits for a good example, a good explanation, including some math in case you wanted to use more than three colors or whatever. It's very helpful. And as far as the decreases go, uh, same thing. Just find yourself a basic hat pattern and follow the decreases as normal. But here you can see exactly what's happening. You see how it goes in a spiral? Now I have a crochet tutorial that's just like this, as a matter of fact. I'll link that one below in case there's any crocheters who want to share this seamless striping pattern. One of the trips that we've gone on since we have last spoken was a trip to the UK and we wanted to see our baby. Thomas went over there with the Air Force in January and it's been a while since we had seen him so we, um, we, we went to see his world, see what he lives in, what he, you know, what he does. And while we were there, I'm not going to bother you with all of our, our vacation photos and everything, but there were some crafting related things that I saw that I thought, oh, my friends would like to see this. What we ended up doing was we saw Thomas that first week in London, um, very short, jam-packed. There were friends that I would have liked to have called to see and couldn't fit that in. And our primary visit was to see Thomas. And we did make it to an Arsenal game, which was really, really fun. I've never been to a pro uh, football game. And I say that because that's what they call it over there, but it's soccer, if those of you who don't know. And that was wonderful. But after that, Thomas had to go back to work, so Tucker and I did some touring. Just for clarity, we went there for two weeks, had London with Thomas on the first weekend, and then he went back to work and we did some touring, making our way closer to him when we then got to spend his four-day holiday weekend together in Cambridge. And we went over to Bath and then took a tour all in the Cotswolds and everything, and Stonehenge was part of it. It was not my favorite thing because I'd already read everything about Stonehenge and seen all that myself. You can't get up to it and touch it. But there was a museum and a gift shop. Now, understand that it's out in the middle of nowhere, so you're seeing uh, sheep graze right over here and, you know, over here on the hills. I mean, it was just, it was sheep everywhere. So when we went into the gift shop, we saw sheep related. Things. For example, these little hats. I believe I have seen patterns for hats like this, but one of the best features of this one in particular was that it was fleece lined. And there are tutorials I've seen that will teach you how to line a hat, which makes it doubly warm. And it was made of all wool. And then there were these adorable mugs and again you'll see Stonehenge in the background with the little sheep wearing sweaters all around because again it's kind of in the middle of all these sheep pastures. Now another part of the tour was in the town of Laycock which is beautiful. It actually has it's uh, been filming locations for many movies from Pride and Prejudice, Downton Abbey, Harry Potter. We got to see James and Lily's house and then, um, oh it doesn't matter. So anyway, these, it was just a little small town and what struck me as most unusual is we were just walking down the street to go into a convenience store to get a cup of coffee basically and here were 
people would just set outside their doors little tables and it would have say vegetables that they had grown in their garden and, and a price and you were supposed to take what you'd like and put your money in the little basket and it was just as honor system up and down the street everywhere and one of the doors had these crochet items um, and you put the money through the letter box you could see the note right there then they had um, a couple of Harry Potter things. So one was empty. One was friendship bracelets with two pounds each. I didn't want to handle them because I wasn't buying any, but I just thought that you would uh, get a kick out of, out of seeing that. And how wonderful that they trust these tourists that are coming through. I mean, we were with a, a, a guide. <laughs> and so it's all these tourists that come through their town and they just, they just trust that people will be honest and, and pay for these. And it just warmed my heart, just loved it. Also, in that same little town, I saw these variety of petunias. Now, keep in mind, I'm really no gardener. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I have never seen these particular varieties of petunia. And when I talked to the guide, who we loved, he was full of personality, um, uh, he saw me taking pictures of them, so I explained, I've never seen this black petunia. And he said it's actually called something about purple or something. And I guess I could see that in there. And then this other petunia that looked like a star or a pinwheel or something, which was really neat. Then of course we had visited museums in different areas. We went to Cambridge, we went to well, Oxford and then Cambridge because Thomas's base is over near Cambridge. So we were in a museum in Cambridge and it was a feature about color in general. And here was this huge display. It was actually a, a portrait-like thing, a, a painting with yarn that you would hang on the wall. And it was basically little snowflakes, medallions, uh, granny circles, that type of thing, in pl carefully placed colors uh, to give you this, this blending effect on the wall and I thought it was so neat. So there you go, you got some scrap yarn, start saving it and you can make a piece of art like this. And of course there were other textile arts that just knocked me over. My aunt being the big quilter that she is, I thought she would really love this art with fabric where they did the strips and all. And this, we're talking, this was ancient. <laughs> So um, I had taken lots and lots of pictures of things like that, so I won't bore you with it. Now, before we went on this tour, I happened to be scrolling through something, Facebook, Instagram, I don't know what it was, and I happened to see this picture and thought you would get a kick out of it. There was a Swedish knitting group on Shetland just before our visit there, and this is a picture of their bus driver trying to get the hold closed. <laughs> I didn't buy any yarn on my trip, but a knitting group, do you really think they were going to leave Shetland without uh, buying some yarn? And another thing that I saw on social media that I thought was interesting was this felting project somebody did. They made this little doll and it's pretty impressive the detail of a felting work that went into it. And, uh, I just, I had to show you that. That it absolutely amazes me. If you felt, if you know how to do that, comment below because I, it, I think it's rare. I don't see a, a whole lot of people doing felting and I think it's because it is really difficult. It's, it's a sculpting with wool. You know, when I sign off of videos, I often say, well, that's all I have to talk about. And quite frankly, I can't say that this time. It's just that if I talked about everything that I have since the last video, we'd be here for ages. So I'm going to cut this off now, and I'll find uh, the other things, put it together to get the next video up, because I yeah, have so much to say. But thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.